wonders of wonders has done happen. The kingfish got himself a job. Yes, sir, in the past three days, he's been employed by one of our biggest realty companies, the firm of Reynolds and Reynolds. Well, it looks like the kingfish done tied himself up with a live wire outfit. Good morning, Miss Watson. Good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Good morning, Miss Burke. Nice sale you made yesterday. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Miss Payne. Good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Good morning, Tom. You've been doing some wonderful work for us. Good morning, Mr. Reynolds. Good morning, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Yes, Miss Smith. I'll be glad to come over to take you right out. Yes, ma'am. I'll be there in the morning. Thank you. You know, someday, if you keep up the good work, we might even have a little home of our own. A little place in the country with the garden, picket fence, flowers. Oh, George, I just know this new job of yours is going to be the turning point in our lives. But you just got to give me my job back. I can't let my wife down. I'm sorry, Stephen. There's just no place for a man like you in my organization. But, Mr. Reynolds, I won't sleep no more. I'll work day and night if you give me just one more chance. Anything. Stevens, I'm going to give you another chance. We've just taken on four houses up around Yonkers. Now, if you can sell one of these between now and, uh, let's say, Saturday, we'll put you back on the payroll. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Thompson will give you the details. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, what do you want? Well, I'm back on the payroll, and Mr. Reynolds said for you to give me the dope on them four houses up near Yonker. There you are, brother. They're all yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're a little on the old side, ain't they? What are they asking for them? Three or four thousand? Ah, uh, five hundred. Only five hundred? How can they sell this for only five hundred? Well, because nobody wants them. They've been condemned by the state to put through the new highway. They're going for 500, but whoever buys them's got to move them out of there. They've got to be moved. Well, who in the world is going to buy a house without any lot? Stevens, there's seven million people in greater New York. I suggest you start with the A's. <laughs> Hello? Is this the residence of Mr. Aaron Abergenian? Fine. Well, this is Mr. Stevens of the Reynolds Company. I got a nice house for you up near Yonkers. Yeah, two stories, three bedrooms, uh, the lot. Well, I can explain that. Uh, see, there ain't no lot, but it would be easy for you to... <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Quigley, <laughs> but Mr. Zegenspiel, <laughs> Mr. 
Hi, Kingfish. Be with you in a second, Andy. I on the phone here. Yeah. You see, I got a... Uh... <laughs> Andy, did you ever consider the beauties of home ownership? Home ownership? What would I want to own a home for? I was still an unmarried spinster. Oh, Andy, I'm talking about a place in the country. Do you realize how unhealthy the city is for the human physiognomy? Well, it can't be too unhealthy. Most of the people I've seen walking around is alive. Oh, Andy, I'm talking about the air. With all the cars, you was beating the carbon peroxide. <laughs> yes, yeah, son, you was beating what the cars had thrown away. That's bad for you? Oh, yeah, Andy. There's nothing like the country. With the honeysuckle twining and the magnolias knolling, oh, I tell you, it's a vegetable paradise. <laughs> and you know, Andy, I don't think anyone has ever expected quite like that great Greek poet, Omar Kayak. <laughs> Give me a house by the side of the road, a jug of wine, a hank of hair, and thou. Well, that's a mighty pretty thought, all right, but it don't make too much sense, do it? Well, I admit it suffered a lot in the translation, but what old Ma was driving at was you ought to buy yourself a house. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I wanted a house when I come in here. <laughs> the exhaust fumes and Mr. Kayak and the Magnolia, it don't sound like too bad idea. Nothing like it, Andy. And I got just a place for you, Andy. And it's only five hundred dollars. Hmm, not a bad looking house. Five hundred bucks. What's wrong with it? You can see there ain't nothing wrong with it, Andy. You can see for yourself there. Yeah, it looks all right. But a house is a lot of expense. Uh, taking care of the grounds and everything. And... I tell you, Andy, with this house, the grounds is one thing you don't have to worry about. <laughs> Now the well, Andy called me up the next morning and told me he'd bought a house. And I offered to drive him out in my cab. Sure was nice of you to offer to drive me out to my new house in your cab, Amos. Oh, don't mention it, Andy. I'm anxious to see you please myself. Sounds like a wonderful buy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks like they're running a highway down through here. Yeah. Well, my house is around here somewhere. Uh, we'll leave the stuff here, Amos, and we'll walk up to my place. Okay. You know, it's kind of nice having a new highway right near you. <laughs> kind of early to be looking for stars, ain't it? Oh, oh no, ain't it? That's a surveyor. He's laying out the highway. He's going straight through where he was looking up there. Yeah, let me see here. some questions about that house down there. Yeah? Do this new highway you built and go to the right of it? Well, does it go to the left of it? Uh, do the highway make a dead end just this side of the house? Uh, just one more question. 
When must I move the house out of there? By next Thursday. All right. By any chance, do you think the kingfish done trick me again? <laughs> I regret it. I didn't believe you could do it. Thank you, Miss Watkins. And let me tell you, Stephen, I'm a man of my word. You go back on payroll as of today. Thank you. It was a great piece of sales work, Stephen. Selling a house without a lock. I trust the buyer is happy. Oh, happy as a lock. <laughs> I tell you, Stephen. Excuse me. Yes, Miss Watkins? There's a Mr. Brown out here to see Mr. Stephen. Uh, Mr. Brown for you, Stephen. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, I show that you are familiar with that old expression, discretion is the better part of valor. Well, if you'll pardon me, I'll discreet myself down that fire escape. <laughs> yeah, Calhoun, I fear for myself. Ordinarily, Andy the slap happy pounder. But when he get mad, he like a tiger shark with a harpoon in his liver. Calhoun, what is I gonna do? Uh, Kingfish, you have got to get yourself a bodyguard. A bodyguard? Oh, you mean someone to protect me from Andy? Yes. Oh, boy, that's a great idea. But Calhoun, does you know any bodyguard in? I am happy to say that among my acquaintances, there's one slubber Judson, one of the greatest heavyweights that ever kissed the canvas. Fine, Calhoun. I go over to the lodge hall now, and you have him meet me there. Oh, boy, that bodyguard is a great idea. Now, Slugger, as you sure you got this straight, because the details is very important. You sure I got it? What do you think I am, stupid? <laughs> over this with you again. Now I'm going to send for this here Andy Brown and I'm going to have him meet me here. And I want you to get in the closet there and if he starts something and I can't handle him, then I'll give the signal and you come busting out the closet and take the boy apart. Yeah. Well, what is the signal? Oh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I got it. How about that Indian name that the pirate troopers used? Geronimo. Yeah, the Indian name, Geronimo. Now, when I Geronimo, you come out slug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, out here. Now, I go down in the basement and tell Lightning to go across the street to the pool hall and tip Andy off that I is here. And that way, he'll be off his guard, and he won't know what he's walking into. <laughs> yes. This whole thing's gonna look like a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> hey, you mind if I use your phone? I gotta call my manager. Uh, yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, I'll be right back. Well, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Get down here right away. Well, I can't come down now, Joe. I've got a little job, but... Listen, you lug. I knocked my brains out to get this fight. Get down here, or the deal's off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's right, Lightning. You pop across the street to the pool hall and give Andy Brown a hint that I is here. Uh, yes, I'll build right on over there. <laughs> now, Slugger, if, uh... That's it, Slugger. Stay in the closet. That's you and your head, Slugger. 
Now all I gotta do is sit here and wait for the slaughter. <laughs> Here you come now, Slugger. Kingsley, give me my money back or put up your dukes before I start closing your face in from five directions. Now, wait a minute. That boy. That boy? You heard me. <laughs> Don't come fucking in here like this. I liable to lose my temper. You liable to lose your temper? You talking awful big, Kingfish. So what? What are you going to do about it, stupid? I'm going to find out if your fist is tough as your mouth. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you ask for it. Geronimo. <laughs> uh, just step back here and wait for the massacre. What's <laughs> <laughs> you writing to know? Geronimo. Kingfish, what's going on here? Stop. Oh, wait a minute, Andy. Andy, wait a minute. Geronimo! Hiawatha! <laughs> Rain in the face! Jim Thaw! Hey, please, stop defending yourself. Time out, Andy. Time out? Yeah, I got to step in the closet here and investigate the Indian situation. <laughs> Be with you in a minute, Andy. Slugger! you. Slugger! Slugger! This ain't no time to be playing puss in the corner. <laughs> Kingfish, come out of that closet before I come in and tear you apart. Be right with you, Andy. Slugger! Slugger! Mmm, yeah. Kingfish, come out of there. Did you want to see me about something, Andy, old pal? I sure did. <laughs> Andy, I bet for a minute you thought I was serious about beating you up. Didn't you, good friend, sweet boy, lifelong pal? Oh, don't give me that stuff. Uh, now, wait a minute, Andy. The whole thing was a joke. <laughs> Kingfish, this is a dirty trick you don't ever pull on me. Sticking me with a house that ain't got no lot. Uh, uh, now, wait a minute, Andy. I'm going to make good. I'm going to make good. Uh, you is? Why, certainly, Andy. You don't think for a minute that I'd stick you for a house without sticking you for a lot, too. <laughs> Sounds more like it. Now, Andy, I'm going to supply the lot, and you can move the house right on it. Meet me here at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and I'll have everything worked out for you. You ain't up to no tricks, is you? My word of honor, Andy. I'm going out now and get you one of the finest lots in the whole city of New York. Well, you better, Kingfish. That's all I got to say. That's right, Mr. Reynolds. You being a big real estate man, I thought I'd come to you. I want to buy a lot, uh, one I can move a house on. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm sure we can help you. Just what did you have in mind? Well, a uh, large residential lot, nice neighborhood, view, shade trees. Fine. Just, uh, how high did you intend to go? Well, if uh, things is right, I have prepared to go as high as $82. <laughs> well, Kingfish, it's 3 o'clock. Well, I just going over your lot here, Andy. A beautiful spot. Is there a lot in a nice neighborhood? Oh, sure, Andy. And it's centrally located, too. It's right in the middle between two other lots. Well, you couldn't ask for a better location than that. Yeah, it only cost you a couple of hundred bucks to have the house moved on to the lot. Yeah, I might live in the house while they're moving it. That's right. The trip might do you good. There's no thrill like whizzing through the city in your own home. Yeah, well, let's think of where to put the house on the lot. Uh, I want a nice backyard, you know. Well, uh, here's the house, man. Okay. Now, I'll take the dimensions of the lot and see how much room we got. Yeah. With the lot, 35 feet. Mm. Width of house, 42 feet. <laughs> uh, Andy, I think we better go with these figures again. They ain't jiving like they oughta. Width of lot, 35 feet. Uh, width of house, uh, still 42 feet. Andy, 
I think I hit upon what the trouble is. Your house is a wee bit bigger than your lot. A wee bit? Kingfish, this house is seven feet too big for this lot. What in the world is we going to do? Well, in there, there's nothing to get excited over. In the real estate circles, that's what's known as overlapping. I think the smartest thing uh, to do is make a few altercations. Uh, altercations? Yeah, now you could cut seven foot off of the house and bring the outside wall in, and there you is. Yeah, but what do that do to the inside of the house? Well, uh, now, taking seven foot off of the dining room won't hurt it a bit. You still got a nice size dining room, uh, 12 by 3. 12 by 3. I'm gonna need a long, thin table in there. Well, any taking seven feet off of the kitchen won't hurt that either. All you lose there is the sink, refrigerator, and stove. Yeah, sounds like I won't need the table in the dining room after all. Yeah, come on nice upstairs, yeah, too. Uh, all you got to do is cut off... Uh, What's the matter? Well, Andy, uh, I think if you cut off seven foot off of the bathroom, it's gonna make it just a little bit inconvenient for you. So half of the tub inside the house and the other half out. Uh, half the bathtub outside? Mm -hmm. well, that ain't gonna look too neat, is it? Well, you can uh, spread a little ivy over there and make it look like a window box. Yeah, but when I take a bath, how is it gonna look to people passing by? Me sitting up there taking a bath in the window box. Andy, you just got to wear your bathrobe when you take a bath. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll wear my print one, and they'll think I have a geranium. Andy, putting a 42-foot house on a 35-foot lot is just a minor problem. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. I've been thinking this whole mess over. Now, I ain't never been a fussy guy. But I ain't gonna stand for jamming that big house on that little lot. You gotta do something. Now, wait a minute, Andy. A bargain is a bargain. You bought the house, and that's that. And if you don't want the lot, that's your business. Now, wait a minute, King. Don't you dare lay a hand on me, Andy Brown. I happen to be a real estate broker, licensed by the sovereign state of New York. Well, what's that got to do with it? And who is the sovereign state of New York? The people. Well... And who do the people elect as head of the sovereign state of New York? The governor. That's right. And have you got the nerve to stand there and punch Tom Dewey in the nose? No, I don't want no trouble with the governor. I ain't got nothing against him. And on top of that, I can't give you your money back. It'd be a violation of the building code. Well, how would it do that? I sold you a stucco house. And under the law, you is a stucky. <laughs> Get out of here before I think of some other law you done broke. No, oh, me. Well, fellas ain't done nothing. I show sure got myself in a mess of trouble. Andy, you mean to say you gonna let the kingfish get away with this? Well, there ain't much I can do, Amos. According to the kingfish, all I could do is get in a fight with Governor Dewey. And you got to have a license from the state of New York to do that. Yeah, uh, well, we could go to court, Andy. But I don't think no jury could think anybody could be as gullible as you is. Yeah, I sure is gully, ain't I? <laughs> but Andy, and you tried to sell the house? Yeah, I tried, but no one wants the thing. The house one place, and the lot another place, and the lot too small. And the highway people say, if I don't get the house out of there by tomorrow, they're going to slap a fine on me. Yeah, the way the Kingfish has been pushing you around, you suddenly is entitled to a break someplace. And Andy, maybe something will turn up by tomorrow. Sapphire! Hi, home! George, I was waiting for you. We going out. Out to dinner? No, George, I have a surprise for you. Now that you have a steady income coming in, I decided to do something about this apartment of ours. I tried to get you all afternoon, George, but it was such a wonderful opportunity, I couldn't pass it up. Opportunity? Yes. I run into Andy Brown, and he sold me the most wonderful house in Los for $750. What? That dirty crook. I call my lawyer. I call my doctor. I call everybody. 